How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Aaron Fortin. I am a glassmaker and a photographer and today we're going to be talking about my considerations in glass and some of the things that I consider when I'm making my pieces and ultimately the process of most of my work. You'll see that a lot of this work incorporates small bead like glass with depth and layers in them and this is a process that uh, I'm fortunate to have the luxury of doing quite often because I am a bullseye employee and this glass comes from a kiln called the vitrograph kiln. It was designed by Rudy Gritch. It's a small box kiln. It's got an 8x8 eight eight inside and there's a hole at the bottom. That hole at the bottom allows for the glass to be pulled out into strands. And the kiln is elevated and when the, the glass is pulled out through the bottom you get long strands and then you cut it up into tiny pieces. And this is also a process that was first discovered in Murano in Italy in the late 15th, 16th century, an ancient process that I have just absolutely fallen in love with. And I want to talk about some of these considerations. So you'll see here that, you know, these are constructed very differently, all these pieces. We have a piece here that is a random assortment of Marini. This is three different poles of Marini. And when I say poles, I mean, you know, so pulling one pot of Marini gets me a certain assortment of colors and design, right? So when we look at this bowl, we can see that there is one pot of orange Marini here, and then there's another pot of blue and green Marini. This process takes about three hours of pulling glass out of the kiln, two to three hours. So on top of that, each piece is hand cut. And this takes hours to hand cut these pieces and place them individually inside your uh, interface, your, you know, your dam or your, um, your circle. In this case, this is a circle with a white rim. So I cut a white rim for this bowl. I laid it on some Tecta, and then I was able to just place the Marini piece by piece inside this white rim. And it made it quite easy to design this piece. Um, you know, I like the contrast of colors. I don't focus much on the color wheel. I kind of just let my brain determine what is going to work and what isn't gonna work. Color wise, you'll see here that uh, this is a piece that I have on my website called Galaxy V1. This is one of my first Marini bowls I ever made and this one holds a lot of value to me because I incorporated three different pots of Marini in this bowl and this is going to be very hard to replicate if I ever try and replicate it again. So. The, the process of Marini is a unique one and almost one that is very hard to replicate. And in my cases, I try and make pots of Marini that are hard to replicate. I don't want the same Marini every single time because that means that a lot of my work is going to look the same. And that's not what I'm going for. Another thing to consider is unconventional shapes with Marini. You'll see here that this is what I call canoe. Uh, this is a canoe shaped bowl that I um, haven't actually seen yet in, in glass since I've been working in glass for about two and a half years. These shapes are very unconventional and they're very uncommon and I love to make them. Um, so the way I design these is I get a flat piece of Tecta clear glass and then I get a colored piece of glass and I place that on top of the Tecta 
And then I start aligning my Marinis on top of that colored glass. And then I fuse the piece. And then I lay it flat on top of a dropout mold. And if you are subscribed to my channel, you know what this mold looks like because I have a video um, called uh, Cutting the Edge Off Your Dropouts, Cold Working Your Dropouts. And in that video, there's a mold that is a square rectangular mold with a, uh, an ellipse dropout in the middle. This mold looks very much like that, except it's not an ellipse dropout, it's a square dropout. So it's a 15 by 8 ceramic mold with about an 8, eight inch uh, square cut out of the, cer uh, the center of it. And when that glass is few, uh, slumped on top, it's laid on top of the mold, and when it's fired, the glass slowly drops out. And then I cut the rim off, and I'm left with this, this shallow little canoe looking shape. And some of the cool considerations you can do are you know, I have a red on the inside of this bowl or this canoe, and then I have, you know, one pot of Marini that is sort of tan and white, and then towards the center of it, I have a strip of blue to give it a little more depth and a little more color variation. Um, I absolutely love making these. These are so much fun. So let's get a little close up on these, these pieces and show you what we're looking at here. So here's a close-up of the big bowl that I just showed you guys. And you can see that this Marini has depth and layer to it. You know, you can see variations of white, you can see variations of blue, you can see variations of green. Um, this is all done by how you load up your pot. And what I mean by your pot is your pot in the vitrograph kiln. So here I have, I started out with a layer of turquoise and then I have a layer of white and then I have a layer of green. And as that glass drops out of the kiln in those layers, in those sort of sequences, it has this layering effect of um, how this glass is pulled out through in canes. Um, let's look at a different one. See, this is another consideration. So here we have a Marini that is blue and orange. Let me zoom in a little bit here. So we have a blue and orange Marini. This was a, a, P, uh, a pot of Marini that was basically just orange and blue. And then we have an unconventional looking Marini here in this little strip section here. This is what I absolutely am obsessed with Marini for because this doesn't look like any sort of glass you've probably ever seen, this pattern. And that's because when I loaded the pot, I didn't actually do layers of blue, orange, blue, orange. I did a mishmash of dense white, French vanilla, and transparent red. And I didn't layer it. I threw it all in the kiln in a way that I thought would be interesting and I'm not going to share that information with you guys because it's um, quite secret to me but you can see that this is a very unconventional looking design and this this kind of design travels a long way in glass because when you see this stuff you think wow how did he how is this accomplished and you know I can talk about how I designed this more but the uniqueness of this Marini is um, very, going to be very hard for me to replicate again. But it's definitely a process that you guys should consider when you're pulling Marini. Not just the conventional shapes and designs, but the unconventional shapes and how you can incorporate those two together. Here's the bottom of this piece, a more close up. You can see as the glass dropped through, it started to stretch here 
towards the top and you get this pulling effect and I can I like to, to cut the drop out to a point where you get just enough of that little pulling effect to add a little more flavor to the piece these pieces are all on my website or this one is um, let's get a close-up on the galaxy bowl this piece is also on the website you can see all the variations in the marini in this piece and just how it's transparent it is from the light behind it this is um, a piece that I don't know if I'll ever be able to replicate so when someone has this in their home eventually um, you know have fun and enjoy it and enjoy looking at it because you'll never see one again I don't think there are a few considerations that go into loading your pot of marini so you get a flower pot right imagine your flower pot here and this marini here with all these um, circled um, design elements and depth in this marini is all basically made by cutting circles of glass and then layering them in the flower pot so you have your flower pot and the flower pot gets exponentially wider so you're cutting circles you know three inch three and a half inch, four inch, four inch, four inch, four and a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, all the way to the top. And then as that glass is pulled out, you get that depth of color. All those colors are coming through and you're chopping them and you're getting this depth element. Another thing you can do is create cane. And cane is an assortment of layering of colors in your pot. So, Rather than cutting circles, you throw glass in the pot, you throw billets, you throw chunks of glass, you throw frit, you throw all these mishmashes of colors and glass chunks and sizes. And then when the glass is pulled out, you have a crazy assortment of color. And then you can start twisting the rods or the canes. And then it becomes something completely different. It looks like a candy cane, depending on what colors you use. So there are many different variations to the vitrograph kiln that you can consider and they're all exceptionally fun to work with. Some of the more notable uh, Marini artists that influence these pieces of mine, uh, number one being Giles Bettison, an Australian glass blower who does some of the most incredible Marini work that I've ever seen. It's hot glass, so it's not necessarily, uh, it doesn't necessarily look like this glass, um, but uh, definitely one of my inspirations for how I designed my Marini. And another artist that inspired these sort of conventional plates, or bowls rather, with, with rims on them, was an artist named Mel Munson. M-E-L, Mel Munson, M-U-N-S-E-N. And he is one of the, the more renowned kiln form Marini artists that I've seen who creates conventional shapes and also does more draped molds. Um, very talented artist. So go check them out. So I'll end this video by showing you guys one last piece here. This was a, a test piece that I made out of that same 15 inch bowl that I just showed you guys, the really large one with the orange marini down the middle. This is that exact same shape bowl, same size. But what I did was I slumped it in a three step mold that goes from 15 and a half to about 12 down to about nine and a half in three different mold slumping steps. And this was a test that I wanted to do because I wanted to see how the perimeter of this bowl looked from the outside. And also, you know, there are a lot of bowls that you'll see on art glass websites and kiln form glass websites that have great conventional shapes. They're very rounded and you can see the design elements from all angles. And I wanted to achieve that. Um, unfortunately, you know, I didn't get a perfect, a flat slumping process on this mold. 
uh, I got it to pull down towards one way and it, it tended to slope down and so I have this unconventional looking uh, shape which I don't hate but one of the things that you have to consider when you're slumping um, glass multiple times is how it pulls the outside of your glass. See how the outside of this glass is sort of muted and kind of morphed? That's from the glass pulling down and also from the mold catching the glass and kind of um, giving it a matte finish. I don't love this. You know, I don't love how you can't really see this Marini as well as you could in the inside. See how the inside is more glossy and more defined. So that's one thing to consider too, is if you're gonna slump your glass multiple times, you may get this kind of warping and matte effect on your glass. And uh, you know, I'm glad that I went into this knowing that it might not come out how I want, but um, it's a good thing to talk about, you know, and talking about your glass is something that you have to get better at eventually. So here we are and you know maybe somebody likes this one day maybe someone's like you know what I love how unconventional that is I love that it's it's kind of warped down and you can see one inside one one section of the glass here as opposed to right here you can't maybe someone falls in love with this you never know so if you guys have any questions about Marini about the vitrograph kiln about any particular pieces that I showed in this video let me know like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and uh, I'll see you out there. Keep fusing.